Hey guys, it's Sheepy, and welcome to Trading Tips. With Manco Keys, the epicenter of the TF2 economy, haven't you ever wondered how they became so popular? If you've ever played Team Fortress 2, you know there's tons of hats, cosmetics, and weapons. And just like everyone else, I've been wanting some for myself. So over the past two months, I've been staying up very late and trading. With trading, you're always aiming at gaining a little more than you already had, usually in the form of keys. But what's the significance of the key? It's not a hat, you can't use it as a cosmetic, and it can't be used as a loadout. So why would anyone want it? That's because it's not an item to be kept, but a utility to be used. Why does everyone hoard this? Well, it's simply this. The Manco key underpins the entire TF2 economy. With keys so vital to TF2, they're treated by the community like currency through trades. The irony here is that Valve never intended keys to be used as currency by the community. If we jumped into a teleporter and went all the way back to May of 2009, we're talking back when weapons being unboxed was exciting. This time, no cosmetics existed, but they were finally hinted at in a magazine within the Sniper vs. Spy update. Nearly three months later after this update, back in 2009, Valve released the first ever hats for different classes, thus dubbing TF2 the Virtual Hat Simulator. It was cool to have a hat, and if you didn't have a hat, you weren't cool. Hats were added to be unlocked with other items through keys, which you could buy for $2.49 from the Manco store. This made keys and hats nearly the same value due to the limited amount of hats, thus making hats substitute goods. Now, substitute goods are two alternative goods that you could be used for the same purpose. The only thing separating hats and keys was what class of hat you wanted versus what you could get with the key. This made keys more valuable and liquid. Liquid, you say? Yes, liquidity. What do you mean by that? Liquidity is the ease of which an item can be traded for other items or quote unquote pure. It's easy to trade keys for other items while trading unusuals is much harder. An example is a genuine professional killstreak sun on a stick. It's worth a key, but it's extremely difficult to trade unlike a key, which can be easily used. Instead of selling items worth the value of keys, you could now say I'm trading pure keys. The demand for keys will always be high due to their functionality in trading. For starters, keys can be used in basic one key trades that you do in any old trade server, all the way up to high tier thousand key unusual trades or even for the golden pan because of their intrinsic value. Secondly, they can be used for cashing out of the TF2 world by selling them on websites that offer cash value such as Marketplace.tf or Steam or other websites. Just be aware of those who offer more cash for your TF2 keys, as that's a common scam method. Lastly, keys are also perfect for storing value in your backpack, unlike refined metal. See, where the key shines in TF2, the refined metal is in the darkened corner of every trader's mind and inventory. Back in my day, keys were worth 2.33 refined. No more, no less. What is the refined metal and why has it fallen from its glory days? It's always considered to be the loose change of the economy, but that couldn't be more wrong. In the earlier years, if you wanted weapons, there was a system that would drop items while playing the game. This is known as the item drop system, as it would reward you while playing with items from weapons to select cosmetics and tools. Valve implemented refined metal as a consumable item to be used in the crafting of hats and cosmetics. If you wanted a specific class weapon or one of the new hats, you could craft your extra weapons into metal. The first being scrap, then reclaimed, and finally refined metal. However, everyone started to notice that crafting items wasn't profitable or exciting, unlike keys and unboxing. The amount of refine kept increasing and the demand decreasing. This started the inflation of refined and what we know as supply and demand. 
For any lucrative trading or serious profit, you need to understand the supply and demand of what you're trading. For example, during Christmas season, right after Christmas, we saw a demand for keys skyrocket. This is because people likely received money or Steam cards and wanted to buy keys so they could buy whatever they want. Unusual, skins, who knows what. The supply of keys remains the same so the demand increases the price, making keys priced more expensive than they were two months ago. When you can understand and predict the demand of a given item or group of items and buy before the demand increases the price, you can make insane amounts of profit. The common misconception is that keys are going up in value, which is wrong. What's actually happening is refined metal is decreasing in value, which pushes the value of other items and more refined, giving the appearance of a rise in price. Refined metal is still used today in low tier trading, but has lost much of its purchasing power due to the economic problem with its utility. If Valve changed refined metal to be a craftable and limited use tools, such as gift wraps, skins, paints, or exclusive Halloween items that keys could not buy and were not tradable, it would revive the utility of refined because desired. Until then, Refine will only have its use in low tier trades and will keep decreasing its value among traders. Understanding this about refined metal, the question may arise, will keys ever decrease in value? Will Valve ever destroy the value of keys? And honestly, we can't be sure, but what we can say is based off of the history, the Manco key is going to say the currency most used by the community. Now, Valve has done some things to the market, and we're going to cover those right now. The first one being unusual taunts. Now, while this is a whole video in itself, to sum it up very quickly, unusual taunts used to be very coveted and an extra special thing to every single high tier trader's inventory. However, because of the sales and bonuses that Valve added within the recent Jungle Inferno update and the Halloween update, and just varying degrees of percentages increasing with unusual taunts, they have flooded the market, making them not as valuable, coveted, or wanted, thus making the market for unusual taunts extremely difficult to actually calculate with everyone trying to sell under each other you get this problem where we don't know how much unusual taunts really are again we'll cover this in an entire video but another example would have to be with war paints because there's so many war paints we don't exactly know which war paint is the most valuable other than the rarity tiers and the rarity tiers are all right at determining value but ultimately if they keep adding in more war paints it will be highly undecisive on which war paint will be worth the quote unquote most because each war paint could be considered in its own right unique and exciting to each trader and the last example i'm going to bring up is keys now we are seeing more keys that are exclusive to different crates like the recent smith smith key you couldn't use a manco key to open that case you had to use the smith smith key if they used a new key that was universal to the recent crates that would undermine the current tf2 key the manco key and that would cause continuous problems in the future so far we're not seeing that as an issue but those are some possible problems we could have in the future and ones to look out for outside of valve and team fortress 2 and what they can do through steam the community market it's also important to know how the third party influencers can change and ultimately influence the community as a whole, as a trading community and as a community that uses keys as currently currency. Maybe that was a little redundant. I'm talking about though scrap.tf and backpack.tf. And while there are competitors that I'm aware of like STN and other places, backpack.tf I would say, and I'm sure everyone would say, is the ultimate pinnacle of trading information, the hub you could say. In understanding Backpack TF and their influence, they a long time ago changed from valuing things from buds to keys. And that was a huge shift in a whole video in itself and we could see the buds and their value and influence completely dramatically drop. We could see something like that with TF2 in the future if something like that were to happen. 
for now it looks pretty stable i say pretty with quotes but who knows what could happen i'll be explaining why buds dropped why bills hats and other items dropped in the future and in future videos because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to trading in any case i hope this has been interesting and i hope you really understand that the price of items isn't going up but the value of them is decreasing meaning you need more of them to have that same quote unquote price Anyways guys, if you have any questions, let me know down below. We'll be covering more videos that talk about TF2's trading scene in depth and hopefully that we can explain them to you in easy to understand manner. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. You've just been filled in and I love your faces. Peace.